Hello and welcome to another modeling video. This is Alan from the Makana Man at YouTube with a, another modeling video. Today we're going to be looking and building the 172nd scale Bradley by Dragon. A modern tank for a change. I bought and been working on this for a couple of years now and been fairly uh, put off. Uh, this kit even though maybe one of the finest and well detailed proportioned Bradleys on the market compared to others like Ravel and whatnot, it was a uh, quite a mammoth challenge in building and finishing. Dragon 172nd kits can be hit and miss. Generally, the proportions, the detail, the accuracy of the subject are quite fantastic and impeccable. You will not be disappointed on the flip side they are very well known to push aside and uh, get rid of all forms of convenience in return of uh, quite an anal and extremely high standards of uh, finish detail and again mentioned proportion this can come to the expense of uh, building the model uh, it is rumoured with a lot of their 72nd subjects are normally just a scaled down version of their 35th and sometimes their builds completely stand alone. The kit comes with quite a number of styrene runners, many, many parts, very high part counts, a lot of small uh, detailed bits and pieces. Uh, photo etch, uh, most of them not really used, decals and instructions. Uh, pity that the instructions follow very few steps with well over cluttered uh, information and sometimes missing out on parts or confusing your variants. The first step of this build was applying the wheels and assembling the chassis as uh, the joints were not too well refined you'd have to glue and hold and set. It's a very, very slow and tedious uh, process. My suggestion when attacking these builds is probably forego the plastic cement and using something that's quick or immediately drying like super glue and only attempt a few or half a dozen pieces to be glued together and take a break from a little while and attempt another kit. This may really drag out the uh, length of build time, but you should get an okay uh, response. Another bit of advice when building something like this and you want to be quite serious for a competition or an accurate finish, get reference material of all sides of the tank and compare those and details with the instructions as it should not be relied on. I feel a lot of reviews really give this kit a glowing and substantial uh, feedback. And again, at this stage of the video, you can see together, it looks quite nice. I feel I may have made a few mistakes or may have added incorrect parts for an incorrect variant or not enough parts. I believe I got together uh, competent enough as a casual modeler. So it's okay to my standards. Uh, to those who are very strict about um, historical accuracy, may not appease them but when attacking this project if you take the weight that uh, the model is going to be quite a challenge and something that you should take your time and not just a quick build like a S model or a Revell kit or an Airfix or something it can be quite enjoyable but it's uh, not exactly uh, a quick casual build and casual models should avoid this. Once completely built uh, painting was done Everything was primed using the Gaia Note Evo Surfacer, uh, dark oxidized red as a tank primer. And I used the Mr. Color color modulation set for sand and dark desert colored vehicles. I followed the instructions, which is in the same honing your airbrush skills video of the month. And it came out to a fairly nice uh, result straight out of the bat. Further weathering methods were used, including the use of pigments uh, by MIG, as well as the sand and rust colors, which were newly developed and acquired in Japan by Mr. Hobby. So it was a lot of fun getting it all off the ground and giving it 
the appropriate paint finish to what I was rewarded with the detail. Maybe just painting it a standard flat brown or sand may not be 100% fulfilling with the very subtle rivets detail, reactive armor and whatnot. Uh, none of the uh, bits of photo which has been included, I don't think that's too noticeable, especially the ones that are sandwiched between the reactive armor, so that can be ignored. Uh, the extra detail being painted was done by hand in acrylics and lacquers. Uh, picking out the detail was done by researching other models that were made. Uh, historical photos as seen in the start of the video as well as the reference material that I had to blow up on the computer as the page was a bit small. This project has been on the go for close to two years and once built sat around for approximately a year. I'm glad I put off painting until I accidentally found the color modulation set as well as the weathering products. It was a very good experiment. Even though this kit is far from perfect in the build, I'm not satisfied with what I did. I think with a more mature approach I have on modeling now, I probably would have done it more justice. But considering this build as a learning stepping stone, as well as the dragon Nash horn I made a while ago, I think I would be able to attempt another modern or unusual dragon subject that I can't get in a quicker, easier build. Uh lines such as S model or Armafast. Uh, the modern subjects I think are highly appropriate as they're very detailed and they've got lots of stowage and extra bits and pieces. Uh, probably not as important for World War II or simpler subjects. If you are after a challenge as well as something that's very rewarding visually, uh, this kit is fairly well worth getting as well as dozens of other variants of uh, this tank available on the market. I have to say that um, it has been a rewarding experience even though it's been very frustrating and hard during the process. Thank you very much for watching and catch you all next time. Stay tuned for more armor reviews, tutorials and whatnot. I've built a couple of armor kits so they're going to be slowly released during the coming weeks and months and should be attempting and starting new armor projects fairly shortly. Catch you guys next time.